Well, welcome back. It's been uh, it's been a long time, and I apologize for that. Um, summertime is a busy time of year, and believe it or not, I did try to uh, culture yeast from a Duvel bottle, and it, it didn't take. So I recorded that and decided not to post it because it uh, was a failure. So we're going to give it another go today. In fact, uh, we're going to do several things today. So um, hopefully we'll cover a lot of different yeast handling um, grounds as well as uh, not screw anything up. So what I'm going to end up doing with each stage of the various processes I'm going to go through, I'm going to talk myself through it and talk you through it. Uh, mostly so that I, I'm very clear on what I need to do so I don't screw something up because we're going to do, we're going to do several things today. Uh, first of all, what I want to do, uh, I'm going to be brewing tomorrow and I want to make a fairly large starter. I'm going to be brewing uh, Belgian Strong Dark and, and a single smack pack is not enough yeast to, uh, to, to handle that sort of gravity. So we're going to pitch it to something like a 2 liter starter, maybe a little less, and uh, put it on the start plate for 24 hours and that will build up the yeast count. Um, almost to where uh, Mr. Malty suggests it should be. It's going to be a little low, but um, I'm willing to take my chances at this point. Um, then we're going to uh, take a culture of that yeast from the packet after I dump it into the starter, and we're going to streak it out to a plate so that I have that in my yeast bag for the next time. Um, then we want to move on to uh, taking a colony of Pac-Man yeast that we streaked uh, in a previous episode and inoculate a 10 milliliter starter for my brew day next week in which we'll step up to 100 milliliters and then again to a, a liter or, or more depending on what I'll be brewing next week. Uh, oh, and not to forget we're going to also try to culture yeast from a La Fin du Monde bottle. We enjoyed the, the beer last night and so it's freshly opened and I sealed it immediately after flaming the lip and we'll, we'll discuss what I did exactly uh, when we get to that stage. So, uh, I believe that's uh, what we have in store for today. Okay, so first we're going to begin with uh, the yeast starter. And so I have three of our starter warts that we made in a previous episode. I'm going to pour the majority of each of those into my 2 liter Erlmeyer flask, which I've just now sanitized and capped off to keep sanitary. Uh, I'm going to do that by, by way of my funnel, which again, I just recently sanitized uh, momentarily. And uh, I'm going to save a little bit of the starter wort from one of these jars to use as my uh, starter wort for the, um, the bottle culture. So let's go ahead and pour our wort into our flask. So I want to minimize the time that this is open. So I'm going to do it, I think, one at a time and then cover it after each pour. And I think this first bottle, or this first jar, will be the one that I retain some wort in. Oh, and it's really sealed. That's a good sign. So I'm going to need, uh, I'm going to need some help getting that off. The best way to do it is with a nice dull butter knife so that you don't hurt yourself. But you just have to get under that lip just enough to break the seal. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to set this down face down on the table so that we don't get little nasties sticking underneath the underside of that. Okay, and I'm going to pour um, fairly carefully. You don't worry, not worry about splashing. In fact, you want to splash it. You want to aerate your starter wart because the yeast like that sort of thing. Uh, but the uh, the hot break at the bottom, or rather the cold break, um, you could put it in. I mentioned that earlier, I believe, in, in a previous episode, but I'm not going to, only because I'm going to keep a nice clean uh, sample here. And rather than covering this up each time, I think I'm just going to run through and pour it all at once. Shouldn't be a, too much of a risk of contamination. Yep. Splashed a little. I'm gonna clean the floor now, or I'll get yelled at. Okay, well, a little bit of cold brick go through, but that's all right. And last.
The aim here is to shoot for about two liters. This is only a two liter Rennemeyer flask, so I don't want to get quite to the tip. But given that I'm using a stir plate, um, it's not immediately a concern. The, 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 uh, the Croizen isn't going to be as much of a concern because the stir plate basically dissolves, or removes the CO2 continuously and there isn't really a buildup. All right, so now we have our wart and it's about 1800 milliliters. That's fine. That's a little less than two liters, just what I was shooting for. 